Hello, this is Nick Kwiatkowski, and I'd like to show you the part four of how to use an Air Native extension. Uh, parts one through three that we have previously covered uh, talked about creating or first setting up the environment, uh, creating the new Air Native extension, uh, both the action script side and the native extension or the actual native code side. Uh, this fourth part again will be uh, talking about how to actually use that in a uh, Air project. Um, so let's get started here. A uh, couple of steps that we're going to be covering, uh, actually creating the new AIR project within Flash Builder, uh, editing the project settings to use the native extension, and then of course using and testing the AIR native extension uh, project itself. So let's get started. So just to show you um, the files that we ended up with in our third video, uh, in the sample A&E folder over here, I've got a uh, file named sample a and &E dot a and &E. and uh, let's take a look at what the code looks like on that. Go back into Flash Builder. Again, this is the uh, code that we would be uh, targeting. So we're going to have a uh, the constructor, which is going to actually set up that a and &E. We're going to have it expose, which is what we're going to be calling at the end, uh, is supported. Uh, just going to be testing to see if that's actually supported or not. Uh, get test string and uh, get hello world. So let's uh, start from there. And of course, just so you know, the project itself is under com.q2.samples uh, for this example here. So let's go create a new project. Um, I'm going to go new flex project. And we're going to be uh, doing, let's just call this a sample any uh, project. Uh, this will only work in the desktop uh, under Adobe Air, so a &E's do not work under the Flash Player at all. Uh, that is not a, a, an option for you, and you need to be targeting uh, Air, the Air runtime uh, 3.1 or later. Um, I guess technically 3.0 will work, but uh, make sure you have the latest runtime for any of these types of projects uh, whenever available. Um, the project I'm doing here is actually uh, using uh, Flash Builder 4.6, and you must be using at least Flash Builder 4.6 for all these steps to work properly. Um, I'm assuming that later versions of Flash Builder will be able to uh, use these steps uh, in a similar fashion uh, when they become available. So we're going to hit next over here. Because it's just a sample project, we're not going to be hooking it up to a backend server technology, but that's definitely an option that you have. And here we can um, set a couple of projects. I'm going to show you uh, two ways that you can actually add that native extension. I'm going to just show you the first time here and we're actually going to do it the second time. So our main source folder will be under SRC and we're going to give the application ID uh, com.q2.samples.sampleane project and the uh, file name will be sampleane project. So the first place you can actually add your air native extension is under the native extensions tab which is new in Flash Builder 4.6. You can click on this here and we can go to add a and &E hit browse and then we can go actually uh, find this on my desktop say sample a and &E, and then I can add it right here um, I'm going to show you the other place to do this as well because chances are you're going to be taking you're going to be adding a &E's into existing projects or uh, working with these in existing projects now if you're building a uh, mobile um, application these steps are very similar so we're going to hit finish here so here's our project right here. Again, just sample application. A uh, couple things to note in the uh, XML document. Of course, make sure that you are using uh, Air, like the latest version of Air right here. Um, I'm again targeting the 4S6 runtime, which will uh, have Air 3.1 embedded with it um, as a default. So show you guys uh, where to actually uh, embed the uh, a and &E if you already have a project started. Right click on the project, go to Properties. Then we're going to go to Flex Compiler. Make sure that, again, we're using the uh, proper uh, runtime or the proper SDK. Then we can go to the Flex Builder Path, which is on the left hand side, and then the Native Extensions tab. Again, this is the exact same tab that we saw earlier when we were creating the project. We'll hit Add A and E. We'll go Add this to our project, and we'll hit OK. Make sure you select the Add or the Update to Air Descriptor file. So when you add this in, we can hit the uh, drop down over here and we'll see right away that what our targets are. You'll need to make sure that uh, whatever platform you're planning on deploying this uh, application to is one of those targets. 
So if I were to take this A&E that I built on Windows, brought it over to the Mac, uh, it would give me uh, runtime errors when I try to start actually debugging and running because uh, that particular a &E does, this particular A&E does not support uh, the Mac OS. Now to show you guys an A&E that actually does, this is one of the other ones that I've been working on. If I go back to the desktop, go to the serial A&E, this is an A&E that I created. Uh, it's actually for the Adrenos um, that allow Adrenos to directly connect to um, the air uh, system and all that type of stuff. This one here, I'm targeting both the Mac OS and uh, the Windows x86, so I can uh, both debug this and run this, or uh, actually like compile uh, working applications on uh, either platform. So keep that in mind. We're not going to be uh, keeping this in our project for right now. We're going to hit OK. So our compiler uh, settings were updated, and I'm going to show you the XML document again. At the very end, you'll see a new tab over here, Extensions, uh, where we're going to have Extension ID, and then the ID that is uh, of our actions that we set up in our descriptor file within our action script project, or with the action script side of our A&E. Um, again, to show you what we had set up, if I go back to the assets folder of our last project, um, we have this the ID of com q2 sample sample A&E. That is again what is listed in over here. Um, if you're not using Flash Builder, you're more than free just to add this uh, portion here, and then you can do compiles uh, command line based and uh, everything should work just fine. So we've got our sample project. If we run this, it actually won't do anything with the a and &E. Run this as a desktop application. And when it runs, it just does you know, what we would expect. It just runs a uh, really basic or an empty uh, project here. So using the actual a and &E, uh, you would use it just like you would any other ActionScript library. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a script directive and we're going to go and import the uh, project or import the uh, action script library let's say com.q2.samples.sample a and &E. and then we're going to set up a new uh, variable which is actually the a and &E itself or the you know think of it like that action script uh, project again so we're going to say var so let's say it's for public var um, sample. This will be of type sample A and E equals new sample A and E. And that will run our constructor and that will actually load the project itself. We can go get rid of that. Now, before we really do a whole lot, we can actually try running this, but I do expect it to crash uh, when the application ends. Well, actually, well, yeah, it would. Okay, before we can go uh, much further, we first have to uh, set our um, export uh, settings, and this is a uh, particular step that you have to do explicitly with uh, Flash Builder 4.6. So go to the Project uh, uh, menu, go to Export Release Build, and then go through the entire steps. You will need to make sure you set your export as. Now, in order to use an Air Native extension, you can only do it as a signed native installer for right now. Um, I believe a signed application with captive runtime is going to be coming at a later date. Again, we need to set our certificate that we plan to use. And then here's the most important part under native extensions. We have to say we do want to package uh, this particular uh, Air Native extension. Again, if we do the drop down, we can see that Air Native extension, uh, Air Native Win32 is supported. Um, by default, this may not be checked, and that is something that you would have to do in order to get rid of all your runtime errors. So we'll hit finish there, just let it go and package it, you know, as a sample for the time being. From now, we can start and uh, doing our debug sessions. Now, when I close this, we do expect it to. Uh, uh, crash and there's a couple different steps that we're gonna have to do in order to uh, get rid of this crash so where we go now let's go and create a, a function here function uh, we'll say is supported or is any supported And what we're going to do is we're going to go dip into that a and &E, and we're going to go and just do a trace statement back to see if the uh, a and &E is actually supported. 
Remember, uh, this is something that is in our action script library that calls into our DLL and should retrieve of uh, true. So we'll say trace sample dot is supported. You'll notice that we did get IntelliSense with that, and we should. Uh, IntelliSense uh, should be working through our action script, and this will be the stub action script that we created in our last project. Um, I'm just going to go throw a uh, button on here really quick just so we have something that we can click on. I'm going to say click. Is any supported? And that should run when we click the button. So we'll go and hit the uh, debug on here. When we hit button, we get true. It's exactly what we expected. That's what we had set up in our uh, native code. Again, when we close this, uh, we are getting an error. Now, the reason why we're actually getting an error with this is because we're not unloading the project or not unloading the DLL before we're closing error. That means that the operating system still sees that DLL running and actually memory allocated to it when you're um, closing down error. So it loses its references, so it, the operating system actually gives back uh, error messages or actually gives back an error uh, when you're closing error. So what we're going to do really quick here is make it so that does not happen anymore. We'll say when the uh, error window closes, so on close, generate a little handler here, and say app clo closing. And what we'll do is we'll say, so we can get rid of that error, we'll say sample.dispose. That will actually tell the error runtime, so the Flash Player runtime, to uh, unload that uh, DLL, terminate any references that it has to it so it can be garbage collected, so we don't uh, continue allocating that um, memory, and so we don't uh, get that runtime error at the end. So we'll go and debug this. And then when we close the program, shouldn't be any more error because this is running. I can just do a little trace statement on here saying any is unloading. So if we want to do uh, just something a little more complicated, we can go and have a text box or text input. We'll have this in over here and we'll have another button next to it. And we'll go and do our little hello world samples. So we actually had two functions on here. We had one that was uh, get test string and one that was uh, hello world. So very simply, we'll just say uh, hello world and get test. We'll go and create two new functions for these. So we'll say click. And we'll say uh, this will be our hello world. This will be our hello world test. And then we'll have another one here. Click. We'll say uh, this will be our test string test. do is we'll give our text input a quick ID and say uh, um, display. So in our uh, hello world test what we'll do is we'll say uh, txt display dot text equals sample dot get hello world and that returns a string and the same thing for the other txt display dot text equals sample dot get test string that right there right there should be all that we need if we go run this project again we can hit the button and we should say uh, true because the uh, a and e is supported if we get get hello world we'll say hello world this is your DLL talking. If I say get test, this is a string test from A and E. Those are those uh, static strings that we set up in our uh, DLL when we uh, set everything up. If we close the project, A and E is unloading and everything is all set. That really is all you need in order to do this. 
And then again, if we want to uh, do our uh, release build, same thing as what we did just the last step here. Just make sure we uh, set up our uh, digital signature. Again, the native extension, that isn't currently included. Package contents, uh, you won't actually see the DLL, but it will actually be packaged um, as a part of the A&E. So the A&E will be included with this uh, project. And we hit finish. Builds our sample project and away we go. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, if you uh, want to take a look a little bit more, I do have a couple blog posts um, that are either already on my blog or uh, are pending, uh, will be up there fairly soon, that talk a little bit more about uh, working with the Macintosh side and some of the gotchas that you have with that. And uh, in particular, if you're using Flash Builder 4.6 on the Macintosh and you're including A&Es, uh, particularly A&Es that um, have links, so they're actually built on the Mac, which is obviously what you're going to be doing. Um, you need to actually build those command line based. Um, I'll be including a couple more samples here, hopefully on my blog in the uh, coming weeks and months, uh, about some of the different IDEs and dealing with uh, uh, ANEs on different IDEs like Flash Developed and uh, things like that in order to get those uh, working on here as well. But they're pretty much, you know, you can use whatever IDE you want, but in order to actually get the ANE working, you will have to uh, use command line unless you're using Flash Builder 4.6 for the time being. Otherwise, I hope this uh, sample uh, gave you a good idea of what to do for an A&E. Uh, the other videos are online, and uh, if you would like to figure out a little bit more on how to make some of these A&Es, you know, definitely take a look at those. Obviously, the samples that I have here are fairly uh, easy and uh, pretty simple, but you can keep on taking a look at the documentation that's available on the web, and there's more and more documentation coming up on the web on a daily basis, and uh, you'll be able to see what's going on. So thank you very much, and... Uh, We'll see you on the blog shortly. Thanks.